Well, hey, aren't you glad to be in the house tonight? Um, I'll tell you, I just believe the um, God's coming with answers for us tonight. How many of you know when we come to the Lord to pray, when we come to seek Him, um, he, wants to, he wants to teach us. How's that? Uh, he so wants uh, you and me to be, to walk with Him, to partner with Him in everything we do in this life. And actually, uh, just a moment ago, you you just got uh, taught some some really special stuff. Sometimes it's it's it, sometimes when you're used to receiving a message of faith, it's easy to just be like, oh yeah, we'll see about that. You know, but there was gee, even just what was said. It, it's not just good enough, or it's not what we sh- we shouldn't be trying to do the best that we can do, but the best that God can do. That's that's a powerful statement. What can God do through you? Like, well, when he puts you here on this earth, why did he put you here? What are you doing? What are we, what, he wants to partner with you and me to bring about heaven here on this earth. That's what, so, so the possibilities uh, for you and me to, to move with him, um, and, and so, he, he, we're so limited in thinking so many times because we're waiting on God to move. So we're going to talk just tonight for a moment um, uh, about, about a couple of things. Uh, but I, I want to really want to talk about the start tonight because this is night of prayer. We're going to pray tonight. Um, I want to just talk about prayer. This is a, as we as we come into night of prayer. The Lord said that His house should be called a house of prayer. What is prayer? What is what is, what is prayer? What is uh, if, if the disciples said that's the one thing they're like, okay, Lord, you're telling us all these other things, but show us, t- teach us about prayer. I was asking my wife uh, about what do you think prayer is? And she used a word that I thought was so significant, and, and it was just this one word, reliance. Reliance. And I thought that was probably the best description I've ever heard on prayer in, in a single word. Prayer is reliance. Why do you and I not pray? We got it. We're good. We're good until we're not good. We don't realize that he's the one that's holding up and putting all the time reliance. But if I really believe that I, like everything depends upon him, I'd find myself coming to him a whole lot more. But so many times I think that we think, um, if you'll put up Psalms 103 verse 7, I want to start here tonight. So many times when we pray, we are thinking uh, to get a move of God. How many of you ever are praying, you want a move of God? You want a manifestation of God. But that's not the way that God works. You and I don't pray to get a move of God. You and I pray to get an impartation or, or to get a word from God. So it's not that we don't need that we come to get a word from God, but that he, we come to pray so that we can move with a word of God. We don't need a move of God. We don't just need a word of God. We need to move with the word of God. So when I come to in, in prayer, you're gonna we're gonna look at a couple or at least one example just tonight about just this uh, a wise king, a king, a righteous king. And, and you could see this all through the Old Testament, but how what was sought after was someone to bring a word of the Lord and then walk with that. So that would be the story of Jericho. That would be the story of David when his, him, him and his mighty men, he come back and everything, he encouraged himself in the Lord. How, what did he do? He said, Get, bring, someone bring me the ephod. Somebody bring me, I, I need a word from the Lord. Because that word of the Lord it is given to me so that I can move with it. This is how it still is with our children. This is how it is in our bodies. Or this is how it is in our finances. This is how it is. God, God doesn't just go, okay, I prayed now, abracadabra, alakazoo. I mean, this is bibbity bobbity. This is not like, like some kind of, but we think that God's going to just. Can I tell you, in Acts chapter 2, if all that was that happened that day was a sound of a mighty rushing wind, there would be no help today. (laughs) 
somehow we've moved in this place. We've made the manifestation so much greater than the impartation. When you come to church on Sunday morning, the Word of God is coming forth to be planted in you. He Lord says, if you don't understand this, you don't understand anything. The, the Word, the greatest thing that God can give you is His Word. This is how every work that the children of Israel saw was manifest. Moses got a word. Moses got a word, and he worked with the word. He moved with the word. We don't need a move of God. We don't just need a word of God. We need to move with the word of God. This is what it says in Psalms 103. It says, he made known his ways to Moses, but his works or his deeds to Israel so many times. That that's the disconnect. you got to understand, uh, in this passage of Moses and, and the children of Israel, it was like uh, Moses was the leader, and, he, and, and the Lord wanted to lead a people, uh, in a sense, to come together with the Lord as their king, their God. Their, but the, the, the people, or Israel, said, we don't want to meet with God we want you to meet with God and you just tell us what to do. You just, um, and so they didn't get to know how he worked. They just got to see the outworkings. And, and, and it's a time that the people of God, we know how he works. And we tend those words, those beginning words and those beginning words and, and, and we walk with them and we move with God instead of trying to think about some kind of abracadabra if God would just move. Every move of God starts and originates when, when there was a man who surrendered his will to the Word of God. Every time. Not one, other, not one time ever is it just some, um, just God just is going to do whatever he wants to do. Not here on this earth. Not scripturally. And you can look. It takes the will of man. It takes the will of man. So we're, we're going to, um, what, what do we need when we come in prayer? If, we're, if, we, if prayer is not uh, just uh, about, um, if prayer really is reliance. That's what prayer is. When you and I come and we pray, we, we pray we're praying the Lord. Uh, we're going to look at a couple, just even the Lord's prayer tonight. Um, but when I come, uh, my reliance is, is even on his forgiveness. How, how much have we forgotten that? That how much I rely, how much you and I, we rely on his forgiveness. Oh, I want to, anyway, I just want to give you this example. It was, spoke a lot to me uh, this morning. I end up being uh, in 2 Kings. Um, I was just thinking, and the reason I thought about it was I was sitting there, and, and I was just thinking about what does it look like to partner with God versus trying to make something happen on our own, and, and how many of you were blessed by the rain today? Anybody? Okay. So I, I was very glad to see that, um, and, uh, and 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 I knew I was uh, going to be teaching tonight and, and all of that. But I was actually sitting uh, about and, and just asking the Lord about the hill. Okay, the hill, and um, and so there was some, just things rolling around, just wanting clear clear direction. And so I was just quiet before the Lord because I really won't, we just wanted clear direction. And as I was sitting there, um, you know, I'm, early this morning, you could see to the north, it was dark up there. And I thought, that's strange. It usually it doesn't come from the north, you know, it's either south, southwest. And I thought, I wonder what's going on. So I pull up the radar and I see all this rain coming. And I'm like, oh, I hope it hits us. And it kind of looked like it was going to kind of split. And I was like, no, let's get some rain here, more rain. You know, we kind of did split around Alma a little bit compared to comparably. But anyway, um, as I'm sitting there, and, and, and I'm watching, and the clouds move in the brake line from light to dark, you know, and it still hasn't rained yet. And, and I'm watching that dark push the light out, and I'm, thinking, um, and, and I'm thinking about how dry it's been. And I was reminded of trees that I had planted, and I had saved these buckets, these white five-gallon buckets that I had drilled a little hole in the bottom that you maybe have seen people that have a brand-new tree, and they have buckets in their yard. And they drill that one hole in the bottom so they can fill it up with water so that when they, it soaks into the ground instead of just running onto the ground. Okay. Um, and I remember just, I, I just was this flashback as I was 
uh, a couple of years ago when we had that drought, like 100 degrees, 100 degrees, 100 degrees, no rain, no rain. And I had planted like all these trees. And we watered and we watered. And I had probably 80 buckets out in the, just trying to preserve maybe more than that, probably a lot more like 160. But um, it's, it's embarrassing to say that. And driving around with a four, uh, four-wheeler with a water cart and pumping it up with the pond, filling it up, filling it up. And it was just hard. And, it, and, and, and as this wind blew through, at, in the, in the, and it hadn't even started raining yet, here's this dust blowing across the you know, brand-new graded lawn area, dirt. The Lord's like, you know what I can do? In a moment, I can do what took you days and days and days, and yet it was insufficient. What I can do, I just need you to partner with, partner with me, partner with me. So what do I need? I need a word. And I, and I was thinking about, the, the, I was thinking, and what popped up in my spirit was it, the story about the, the ditches, a valley that was dry. And, and they were told to bring and to dig ditches. And God filled the ditches. And so I want to go there to, uh, uh, tonight just uh, talking about the a word of the Lord and partnering with him. When you and I come to the Lord in prayer, we're not just looking for a manifestation. We're looking for an impartation from the Lord, a word from him, something that I, he, he gives me to hold on to, to watch over, to tend, to work with. To not, this is what he gives me. Okay. So when I'm praying for my children, when uh, he's going to give me a word about a, a promise in his word. He's going to give me a direction. He's going to tell me maybe I need to go to them and or he'll give me a word. So I, and I need to I need to rejoice over that word. Like in that word that he gives me, the same way we're going to look at here is dig the ditch. It's like that's not what I came for. I came for some water. I came for something else. He said dig a ditch. And, you know, well Lord, you know, what I was really coming for was I need you to move here and I need you in a, in a mighty way and just break this addiction off of my family. Break this addiction. And the Lord's like, hey, uh, here, here's what I want you to do. I want you to um, give that away and get a flip phone. In your prayer, this is what he says. Okay, okay, ah, I'm not willing to do that. I need, God, you break supernaturally the anointing. I need the anointing. I need the anointing. That's what I need. I need just like the, the Holy Ghost goosebumps. <laughs> no, you need a word from the Lord that you are willing to partner with. And as you move with that word, that's called faith. Anyway, let's look here. And 2 Kings, it gives a little backstory. Um, it's really interesting uh, as you read um, this uh, book of Kings, 2 Kings, chapter 3. Um, it talks about Moab's rebellion. And uh, that's in the beginning of chapter 1, or verse 1 of chapter 3. But it also talks about how it's the 18th year of Jehoshaphat's reign over Judah. So you have Israel, you have Judah, you have all these different kingdoms. Um, you have Edom in this story here. Uh, and then you also have the Moabites. And so there's four kings mentioned here in this story. Uh, one of them's an evil king. It wasn't as evil, which is ruling over Israel at the time, Was who is the son of Ahab. How many of you remember King Ahab and Jezebel, right? evil, evil king over Israel. But again, Judah and Israel are, are split. They're two different tribes. There's different, uh, different kings ruling over each, each, each area here. And so Jehoshaphat was a righteous king. And yet I thought it was interesting. It just I don't know what, what this makes sense of. It matters who your friends are. Um, and even that Jehoshaphat uh, came to the aid uh, of uh, Jeboam, not Jeroboam, but Je- I can't, uh, let's see here. Um, Jor, uh, Joram, it depends on the, so, yeah, this guy, Jor, in my Bible has an H. Um, jo, that Jor, Joram, um, son of Ahab, king of Israel, he was the king at the time. And so the Moabites, just I'm giving you just a little backstory. You got this guy, you got Jehoshaphat, and you got this Moabites who were super kind to jo, Joram. Super kind, gave him 100,000 sheep and acted like he was buddy-buddy. And then all of a sudden he's like, I'm coming to take your stuff. 
basically blackmail is going on, right? And and he now he's in a sense like, okay, I need to execute justice, but I can't do it alone. I'm going to go to King Jehoshaphat, Joram, and Jehoshaphat make a pat. Jehoshaphat says, hey, my horses are your horses, my sheep, my everything. I'm coming to battle with you. So they come together, and then all, all of a sudden here another king joins. Now there's three kings that join, and they're going after the Moabites. Okay? So, cool. That's the story. And here they are on a seven-day journey, and the, it says the compass or the direction that they were to take and they were to go about, the, uh, they felt was the wisest way. I took them on a seven-day journey, and now they're seven days without water. And the cattle and everything that they went with them, they haven't had any water. And so they are in a place of desperation. I want to pick up here in Second Kings chapter 3, um, and I, I, want, I want to start in verse 9. It says, So the king of Israel, the king of Judah, uh, and the king of Edom set out. And after they had traveled round about, a roundabout route for seven days, they had no water for their army or for their animals. Verse 10. Alas, or ah, oh, right? What? exclaimed the king of Israel. Again, this is the evil king, Joram. He says, the Lord has called us out here. Here this translation says, has the Lord called us, these three kings out here, to deliver us into the... I knew it. I knew it. This is what he's saying. God had us come out here so he could kill us all. Take all of us out and feed us to... But, verse 11, Jehoshaphat spoke up. But Jehoshaphat asked, whoa, hold on, hold on. Is there your word, your word is not the word that we need at the moment. We need a word from the Lord. And sometimes we have friends that we just let speak and we just take their word. We don't, we're, we're, we're afraid even to interrupt sometimes. I'm not talking about being rude, but I am talking about honoring the Lord is, is honoring the Lord. Anyway, I heard somebody say this today, and this, this, will, this will preach. Sometimes we try to show loyalty to, to one another by picking up somebody else's offenses. You got a friend who's been hurt by somebody? They tell you their story, and you'd want to show loyalty to them, so you pick up an offense. Can I tell you, that's not standing by the Lord. <laughs> that's playing, there, there's, there's no righteousness in, in that. And so if there's no righteousness in that, God can't have his way. So if you have a friend whose feelings are hurt, Maybe you should find out of the word of the Lord and speak up instead of just saying, yeah, I know, and taking on their offense because how many of you know the Bible says the anger of man work, does not work the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God is not just holy. It's the right way. Okay? But anyway, that was free. Um, but Jehoshaphat asks, is there no prophet for the Lord here through whom we may inquire of the Lord? We need a word. We need a word. We're in a mess. We're in a mess. We need a word. Well, what's the word? It didn't say we need rain. He didn't say, he just said we need a word. This was a righteous king. Okay? An officer of the king of Israel answered, Elisha, son of, uh, I don't know, Snap Pat is here, um, who, who used to pour out water on the hands of Elijah. So here, Elisha, just just the chapter before, has, has taken, the, in a sense, the seed of Elijah. Uh, he's not n- noted as being like, the man, he's still the son of this guy. He's not the word. He's not the man of God yet, right? You'll fo- find following in Kings the story of the widow, uh, who oil, and then then the raising up of the uh, the Shunammite woman's son. Or uh, you just see all these works. And he had a double portion of Elijah. Elisha did, and yet in the beginning he was just so. Oh, that's that son of a, that guy. But so they, they call for him, Elisha's son, and he, pour, he used to pour water on. He was the servant of that guy. We have, that's all we got as a servant. But go ahead. Jehoshaphat said, the word of the Lord is with him. He said, yeah, but the word of the Lord is with that man. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and king of Adam, they went down. What did they do? They left where they were at. They left everything to go what? To go get a word. You know why we pray? Because to get a word. To get a direction for every day, for everything that we need, we, we, we need a word. 
We need His Word. We need His Word uh, even when we come to Him, uh, to the Lord, as it tells us in uh, both in Luke and in Matthew, uh, when the Lord's teaching us to pray. Lord, thank you for your forgiveness. Forgive us as we forgive our debtors. Like we're that that standing in a place where we're truly every day asking the Lord and remembering forgiveness. Like when was the last time we really remembered that we need to be forgiven? Or are we so aware of our righteousness or self-righteousness that we forgot that Jesus paid a price for our sins every day? Well, we're going to look at a scripture that actually tells us why we struggle to move in certain ways in our life. It's because we forgot. But anyway, he goes on to say, uh, the word of the Lord is with him. So the Israel, they went down. Next verse. I just want to get to, uh, Elijah said to the king of Israel, what do you want, why do you want to involve me? In other words, here's this man of God talking to the evil king of Israel, not the king of Judah, Jehoshaphat, saying, I don't even want to see your face. Had it not been for Jehoshaphat, the righteous king, I wouldn't even entertain you. Wow, it matters who your friends are. Um, and so go on to the next verse. Elisha said, as surely as the Lord Almighty lives, whom I serve, if, if, again, if I didn't have respect for the president of that king, I wouldn't even pay attention to you. Next verse. But, but now, bring me a harpist. While the harpist was playing, the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. So here's a move of God. You know what the move of God was? To bring him a word. You want to move, the, the move of God was to bring him a word. The hand of the Lord came down to touch Emily and that family. I need you to move in this situation. In the pain's life. God, heal our family, dude. He said, the hand of the Lord came down and gave him a word. And that word sustained them. That word directed them. That word set them free. That word lifted darkness. That word delivered. The hand of the Lord came down on Elisha. Next verse. And he said, this is what the Lord says, I will fill the valley with pools of water. For this is what the Lord says, don't use your eyes. You're looking, it's not going to be based on what you see. It's not going to be based on what you hear. He said, there's not going to be wind and there's not going to be rain, yet this valley will be filled with water. And you and your cattle and all your other animals will drink. And listen to this next verse. This is an easy thing in the eyes of the Lord. And the Lord will deliver Moab into your hands. It's important for us to recognize and realize that this was according to a word, not according to a wind. This is according to a word, not according to a rain. This is according to the word of the Lord, and that's an easy thing, according to the word. What do you and I need? We need a, the move of God is always bringing, the hand of God, the move of God is always bringing to you and me a word of God. When I come to pray, when I seek the Lord, I'm coming to find out His direction. When the disciples asked Jesus, what, what, teach us to pray. And Jesus said, and he said this multiple times, I don't do anything, I don't say anything, unless I've received the word to. They recognized that. They recognized something happened. And Jesus, whenever he went away, he went away to inquire the Lord, to have the word of the Lord. And so... Um, I just, I guess tonight I, I just wanted to move our hearts into that place where we're not looking just for something supernatural in a sense to happen. The Word of God, it is spirit and it is life. The Word of God is, is so attached to the will of God. And if you and me would surrender our will and partner with that, God could move. The manifestation always follows... With, uh, a divine impartation. When we receive the word and we tend that word, God can move. In your families, in your finances, it's, it's, it's not like, okay, well, whatever the Lord wants to do, if he wants to just show up. No, it's when we hunger, when, we, when, we, when we're looking to hear from the Lord, to meet with him. He said, I'll meet you there. All right, let's go here. And... Um, it seemed right. So I, I, want, I want to go here uh, tonight. Um, 
Let's go to Second Peter uh, 1, uh, 3 through 9. Second Peter, and again, we're talking about uh, prayer tonight. So when we pray, what do we do when we come? We're looking, uh, prayer is reliance. And what am I looking for? I'm relying on him for a word, a direction. And in the move of God, we see the hand of God moving. The hand of God moved upon Elijah and it brought a word. The hand of God, we see that Moses knew the work the ways of God, but the Israel only knew the works of God. What did, what did Moses get that the rest of Israel didn't get? He talked with God. He met with God. He heard from God. And the Lord said, lay down this staff. The Lord said, go to Pharaoh and tell him this. The Lord said, do this. The Lord said, go over here. The Lord said, hit the rock. The Lord said, speak to the rock. The Lord. He understood how God worked. If you and I will understand how God works, and he works with the word, he always has, and he, this is how he comes to you, what will happen is when we come, we'll know what we're looking for and not have it just miss. We show up in a service, and we're like, well, I didn't get any goosebumps this morning, and worship was kind of off. Did you hear that guy on the keys? I mean, uh, he, he sounded like he had a frog in his throat this morning. And like the transition between songs, it was kind of hunky-dunky, wasn't it? I mean... And then the mic, and then Pastor Nate, he, he, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and you didn't get goosebumps because we didn't have the AC on cold enough. How natural, carnal, carnal can we be? And on Sunday, we talked of just a moment about this. Um, about teaching our kids to give, you know, share, buddy. You need to share. Share that toy. We teach our kids to pray. Oh, look, he prayed over dinner. Uh, but we do we teach them? We teach them to run fast. But do we teach them to fast, which is the denial or the killing of the flesh? In Romans chapter eight, I, I was I was seeing this just the other day. It says this. I want I want to read it before I get to Second uh, Peter one three through nine. It says this. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, put up Romans 8.13. This is, this is so good. It, this is the verse before, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, right? It, talking about that we're to be led by, by the Lord. And you'll go through, if you can, all the way through 15. I don't know if you can, if, if you had to plug that in. It says, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you want to live according to the Spirit of God, here's what you're going to have to do. If you want to live according to the Spirit of God, if you want to live not carnally, where everything that you see or feel is what leads you, and what all you're looking for is a God to move or abracadabra or a sound or something that is the enemy would gladly and much oblige to lead you by, some fleece or a red car driving by or whatever it might be. He said, if you're going to, if you're, going to be, if you're going to be led by the Spirit, you're going to have to do something. You're going to have to put to death the misdeeds of the body or your carnal man or the flesh. You know what that's called? We talked about this Sunday. Fasting. That is a discipline that's really interesting that he follows it right after. And when you pray, when you fast, and when you give, if we were to go to Mar Matthew chapter 6, it is a conjunction. It's a one, two, three. It's a piece of what we need, and it's a piece of what we need in our lives. Everywhere we're looking, we're looking to be comfortable. You know, I just take four or six, eight, at 12 aspirin, you know, or ibuprofen, because we just got to be comfortable, right? I'm not denying your pain or whatever, you know. Like, but sometimes you just got to tell yourself, no, you can suffer a little bit, because you're not ruling me. Uh, I can have chocolate cake, but you can't have it today. Why? Well, because you can't. Because you're telling me you want it. And I'm just letting you know you can't. You don't call the shots around here. Who calls the shots around here? The Spirit of God. From the, I, I'm led from the inside. The next verse says this. It says, for those who are led by the Spirit of God, they're the children of God. You know how we're to be led? By the Spirit of God. 
But if I'm going to be led by the Spirit of God, I'm going to have to practice. This is training. This is why we're having a house of prayer. This is why we're doing prayer, nights of prayer. So we learn to pray. We're not just looking, okay, God, move. I guess God's not hearing me. I guess because he's not hearing me, I'm going to quit praying. Uh, hopefully, and if things get real bad, then I'll, uh, last resort, reliance, hopefully throw up that Hail Mary. Maybe he'll move. And I'm looking for a move all the while when I should have been looking for a word. And every time I'm coming to church, I'm looking for a move instead of an impartation from the Lord. I'm looking for some manifestation. And all the while, the word of God came and deliverance came. And the truth that set me free was right there. And it just went woof right out there. And I was like, uh, and, and the pastor's like, just stick your glove up in the air. Yeah. Sandlot, just stick your glove up in the air. Because the word of God to you is coming. that will fill a valley. That, that, hey, if you dig the ditches, it'll fill the valley. It'll deliver you. It'll set free. It, it'll direct your lives and destiny. And you'll step out and do things bigger. And you'll now hear a word of the Lord and do the best that he can do. And all of a sudden you'll see, my God, look what you did. Because somebody brought up lunch, because somebody said yes, because somebody said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to step forth, and we're, we're, God placed us here to serve this generation. We're going to step forth, and, and we're going to do beyond what we can do. And, and, and the limit of ourselves just says, you know what? Forget that. We're going to step out on the word of the Lord. I don't, need a, I don't need God to move so I can move. I just need a word of the Lord so that I can move with it. And then the people of God will know So he says, those who are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons of God. Um, uh, uh, yeah, it goes on to say that, that yeah, it doesn't make you slaves again to fear. Rather, the Spirit received brought you out of adoption uh, to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. I want to I close uh, before we go into prayer with this uh, passage in 2 Peter. As we talk about prayer and reliance uh, on the Lord, and really what we're looking for when we come, we're just looking to hear from him, to meet with him. Lord, everything in my life, I de- I'm so dependent upon you. So good. I felt like um, th- this was a message that my wife had shared me with, with me that I'm going to be kind of talking from as we read this. And it just seemed right. Um, it was really interesting. Um, it kind of reminded me of cooking I don't know if you have baked or cooked much, but um, sometimes when you're cooking, uh, there's like that last thing that you do, and it doesn't really go, but yet it kind of pulls everything together. And you're like, what? Kind of like, I don't know if you've ever done this, salted caramels. Like, there's something about the salt that just kind of makes it right. Right? And like, who put the salt? It used to, salted caramels is a thing in the last eight years. And all of a sudden, someone's like, huh, that's what you know. And now all of a sudden, ladies are like, that's what I want for my birthday. <laughs> right? Or my wife making these cookies that she just took these big, crunchy salt crystals on. It's like, okay, these are supposed to be sweets. And then you go, hmm, I kind of like that. What is that? It's a little piece. And I, kind of felt like that was tonight in this, as I share this piece, it's kind of like the, some of y'all know what that means, it's like the YouTube video, like the cut the steak, because some of the things we're trying for, and we're praying for, it's not about praying for, um, two things that we've talked about. One thing we talked about recently um, that hinders our prayer life, it's forgiveness. When we don't forgive, unforgiveness. When the Lord says, hey, forgive, Lord, as, you, as you thank the Lord for forgive, thank you that we would forgive others as you forgave us. So there's just this repentance and forgiveness that's going on in that prayer, that start of that prayer. Lord, thank you that it help us forgive others as you forgave us. That, so there's just that remembrance, right? So forgiveness, uh, he, and when you stand praying, if you have ought, this is Mark 11, chapter 20, 11, Mark 11, 25. When you stand praying, right? If you have ought in your heart, forgive that your Father in heaven could forgive you. Like that's that's not just like a, 
I heard it said this way. It's not, that's not an add-on to salvation. That is the, the whole. That's the, uh, that's, the, that's the wheels on the car. Forgiveness. And, um, and so, but sometimes we're praying for things that the, 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 the enemy uh, to our prayers, it's, maybe it's not forgiveness. Uh, maybe we may have part of that down, but it's forgetfulness. And let's look at here in Second Peter. Um, it says, now his divine power, this is, we've heard this, Second uh, Peter chapter 1, uh, starting in verse 3. Maybe we've heard these scriptures about promises that have been given to us for everything that we need. It says this, his divine power has given us everything we need for this life and, and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us by his own. Verse 4, through these he has given us his precious and magnificent promises so that through them again what is a promise it's a word a word it wasn't a move it was a word what did, how did he how did he take care of all of your life a word and through these words it says this that um uh, that through them you may participate in his divine nature having escaped the corruption of this world caused by evil desires next verse for this reason make every effort so then he's like okay I've given you all these things but now there's an outworking that you and I are to have in our lives and sometimes we're praying for these things Lord make me patient Lord Lord help me be kind Lord help me be a better mom or a better dad Lord help me for this reason, make every add to your faith, goodness, and your goodness, knowledge, uh, and your knowledge, self-control. Lord, help me be more disciplined. Perseverance, not quit. Godly. You ever just want prayer on that? Like you're just like, God, help me do that. Next verse. And godliness, mutual affection. And mutual affection, love. Like love is kind of the biggest of all of them, right? Kind of like the, that's it. Lord, he says, add to the, all these promises. Make sure that these things are a part of your life. Make sure love is a part of your life. Not counting, suffered wrong, all these things. He says, for if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive. So we're talking about tonight prayer. We're talking about prayer and ultimately being, uh, I don't want us to be ineffective and unproductive in our prayer life. That starts with us recognizing when we pray what we're looking for. Are we looking for a move? Or are we looking for a word from the Lord to move with? Am I looking for a manifestation? All the while, the Lord is throwing and bringing impartation all the time, all the time. If I'm going to not be ineffective and un and unproductive in my life, there's a couple things I got to know. On prayer, number one, I, I need to know what I'm looking for when I come. I'm looking for how, and how God works. He works with the word. So I need to hear from him. But also, uh, what, there's a lot of times I'm praying for things, and, I'm, and he says this. He says, um, there's things that we got to have in our lives that would make us productive. We're praying sometimes to walk in love, and we're, we are we are ineffective and unproductive because we're still bitter about what somebody else did and so I can't move on from that because I'm in unforgiveness and I'm counting a separate wrong and I'm offended that they're offended or I'm taking on somebody else's offense and love's not even a part of my life and I, my life is spent praying for that which I've been redeemed from if I would just remember something else. Look, it, says, it says you're ineffective, you're unproductive because the, these virtues aren't a part of your life. There are things you're praying for that were supposed to roll off your back. There are things that are coming to you, Pastor Nate, that, they, hey, did you hear about this? Are you, are, do, you, do you need to maybe address this? Da, 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 da. Yeah, that's, that's a bunch of garbage right there. Like, what the heck? It's like, praise the Lord. Instead, it's like, takes up a little bit of that bandwidth, you know? Like, well, what did I, how did I, I should I, uh, Lord, do I? The Lord's like, you're asking me about something that you're just ha be holding as a virtue, and it would if you held that virtue, you wouldn't even be asking me about this situation. And we're praying about things the Lord already directed us in something. Why do we have to pray for an answer where the Lord already gave us direction? We're wasting our time. Let me say it this way. We're ineffective. We're unproductive. We're just 
the enemy's winning. This is why promises are important. You don't need to pray for what you've been promised. You need to thank Him. Oh, Lord, I'm just, I'm just pray for favor on my job today. No, the Lord gave you favor. You don't need to pray for favor. You can thank Him for what He gave you. You don't have to pray for what He gave you because He already gave it to you. When you pray for what He gave you, all you're just expressing is not knowing the will of God. And the enemy knows when you don't know the will of God, you can be destroyed because he can take you and, and convince you that it's not God's will to have you have favor on your job. And so you're unproductive. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive. It's important that we hold these qualities. How and why do I not hold these qualities? Again, we talked about what limiting things in our prayer life. Unforgiveness, but also forgetfulness. He said unproductive in your knowledge, uh, in uh, being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Next verse. But whoever does not have them, if these virtues aren't a part of your life, if love isn't a part of your life, if you're trying to walk in love, if you've been struggling to walk in love, you want to go read chapter 13 of Corinthians. If you're struggling to not count separate wrongs, if you're struggling, and I'm talking to every person here, including myself, if you're struggling to believe the best about somebody, if you're struggling, here's why. Whoever does not have these virtues that were just right above is simply because you're nearsighted and blind and you forgot you forgot that you've been cleansed from your past sins. One of the greatest tools, one of the greatest things that we can remember when we come in prayer is this, that God washed me and he cleansed me. He washed me and he cleansed me. And it goes back to the simplistic verse that we've heard maybe too many times to where it lost its strength. For God so loved you. God loves you so much that he gave his son for you. We're sitting here grading and critiquing and all these kind of things and we're struggling and praying. And the Lord's like, just remember this. I love you. I wash you. I cleanse you of all your past sins. And it goes back. So when you stand praying, not, I'm not in Mark chapter 11, I, 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 when you, but when you pray and you ask for a fish, is the Lord going to give you a snake? Or if you ask for bread, is he going to give you a stone? No, no. You being evil know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more does your father know how to give good gifts to those who love him? He loves you. He loves you. You're in my prayers remembering this piece. We begin to pray things that are based upon not just uh, do my best, but his best. We ask different when we know and remember His love. We forgive different when we know and remember His love. Prayer is different. It's dependent. Lord, thank you that it had, had it not been for your forgiveness. Like, my, my reliance on Him is, is so heavy when this is at the forefront of my prayer. Lord, teach me to pray. Okay, pray like this, both in Matthew chapter 6 and Luke chapter 11. Father, he says, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. Like this is a surrender of will and an acknowledge of lordship. But Lord, forgive us as we forgive. Lord, I repent. Lord, forgive me. And let me, the same way you forgave me, let me express that to others. Wow. Wow. Because you, that, that right there, that understanding of his love. Now when I come and I pray, I ask for what I ask for. But I also, when I hear him speak to me and he gives me a reminder of his word, I hear it from one who loves me. And if, if he that wouldn't spare his own son, what also would he not freely give you? It's time that when we pray, that we're praying partnered with the word, not hoping God would keep his word. You want to remember that God will keep his word right here. Before we ever ask for forgiveness, he said, Father, forgive him. Does your friend 
Does your father, do they have to ask for forgiveness for you to forgive? Or do we just simply have to remember this? Right here. If I'm struggling with the verses ahead, right before this, if I'm struggling with self-control, maybe I just forgot that God loved me so much and has such a plan for my life and such a purpose for my life that he gave his only son for me and he said, and I'm going to put you here and I'm going to put you here with a plan and a purpose and when you remember how much he loves you and how he forgave you, you realize that, God, I'm not my own. I'm bought, I'm valuable to you. Lord, what do you want me to, how do you want me to, show, just show me a partner with that? Yeah, thank you, Lord. Yeah, thank you, Lord. And all of a sudden, you're, you're, you're partnering with the Word, and the, your days, you're on, living on purpose on your job as a mom in the house. Thank you, Lord. I'm training these, these sons and these, these There's something that changes when you just simply remember your value to the Lord, and then all of a sudden, from that place, we love, not just Him, but we love because he first loved us. So the Bible tells us that faith works by love and faith needs to be back in our prayers. Faith needs to be in our prayers. So we're going to stand tonight and um, what we're going to ask, you, we're, there's, I know it's kind of like the salt on the top and it's like, what were we cooking? I don't know. Had chocolate chips and oatmeal and coconut and butter and good stuff and it kind of made this cookie and somehow... Kind of like when they come out of the oven. I don't know. I'm an analogy guy, right? Like everything doesn't have to be Mr. Proper. But somehow when they come out of the oven, Victor, you like the, the ones that have the, the crunchy edges. I don't know if you do, but <laughs> those are my, right? But somebody else is like, I like the ones that are more in the middle of the oven that are just that, like just really soft. That's how it is when the, when the Lord cooks, when the Holy Spirit, when you recognize that God has a word for you. It's like the ones that you get to get that little crumbs. Like you get the crunchies, right, at the bottom of the Long John Silver bag, Mona. For somebody. So where, where maybe you have to ask yourself tonight as we come to the Lord and this house is the house of prayer where we are seeking and, and desiring just that when people would come, they would hear from the Lord. Like that's what changed my life. It was never a goosebump. It was his word to me that, 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 that I, I experienced his love and his kindness and, 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 and direction. And, and But so just tonight, what is, where's the place that we, we need to address in our hearts and what do we need to ask for? Maybe we need to make a little uh, adjustment or critique. But even as we pray, uh, we're praying for the word of God to find people. That when they come, they, they would have eyes that see and ears that hear and hearts that understand what? A word. That they would see and know and acknowledge as we pray for our families, as we pray for our community tonight. We're, we're praying that, that the word of God would speed on. That's what Paul said as he went about establishing the church in an unknown churched world, the bringing the message of the gospel. He said, pray that the word of God would speed on. He said, uh, and even in another passage, he said, I sense that there's a, a wide open door, but not without many adversaries. The wide open door was for the word of God to go forth. It was always about the enemy comes for what? The word. So we pray tonight, and we, when we're praying, we're, we're praying about just, just the Word of God, the plan of God, the promises of God. Uh, and, and yet, as we're praying forth, I just felt so strong in my heart tonight that it was about also making some tweaks in our own approach. Instead of just looking for God to move, just move with the Word from the Lord and and there's some of you that are to start a business that is just off of a word and you're like okay Lord when you move and you do this and then you do this honey you're going to you're going to go to your grave with that word with that seed not just a potential it's a promise that God watch over like the the water is going to fill the valley whether there's ditches or not like And we're going to have to learn to take a step of faith and, and, and walk with God and, and, and live a life doing more than just you can do. 
you're not going to pray for somebody at Walmart or at your work. If you're just waiting for God to move. Instead, you just got to step out on that word. Step out on the word. Just step out on the word. Well, what if? Just step out on the word. Just It's like right following that same passage in Kings. It's like, hmm, Joe. He went to this, this woman's house. This woman made a home for him, made a, a, a Elisha a place to eat. And then he'd stop by there and he'd get a bite to eat and he'd get a bite to eat and he'd get a bite to eat. And next time he comes by, there's a room and a chair and a, a bed. And she's like, go ahead and you can look like you're tired. You can rest here. And he made a room. And, and then he's like, uh, I, I should do something for that lady. What should I do? And she's like, I'm good. I don't need anything. And, and then... He's like, no, I need to do something for her. And he gave her a son. He got a word from the Lord, and he said, you're going to have a son this time next year. You remember? I don't know if you remember the story. And then what happened is uh, it happened, and she, the lady said, don't lie to me. I never asked it of you. You don't lie to me. And the Lord, he, the Lord said through him, no, you have a son by this season next time, time of birth. She had a son, and the son was grown. In other words, he was off of weaning age, so he's probably five, six years old. And he's out in the field running out to daddy as they're harvesting. And he says, my head, my head, my head. And the dad says, oh, oh, he's hurting. Take him to mama. Take him to mama. So he runs and takes him into the house. And, and, and the mama just bounces him on the knee. So he's small enough that he's still on mama's knee. She's just loving on him. And he's hurting. He's crying. He's hurting. And by noon, he was dead. Now what? She said, put him up on that bed where I got the word of the Lord. I'm going to put what looks dead. I'm going to go back to the word of the Lord. Put it there. Uh, honey, I need a horse. I need to go get this man of God. Get, can you get me a servant and a, and, a, and, a, and a donkey so I can go? Everything okay? Yeah, everything is okay. Well, you're not going to wait till the Sabbath? No, nope, I'm going now. Okay, okay. All right, we'll see you back tonight. You got dinner ready? Like, already? I mean, I'm hungry. It's like, yeah, it'll, everything's great. Everything's taken care of. I'll be right back. And she goes and a long way off here, the servant of Elisha sees her coming. Hey, is everything all right? And she ignores him, and she goes all the way to, to the man of God and falls at his feet and says, I, did I not tell you not to lie to me? And here's what Elisha said, and this is what's so important. Elisha said, oh, here, servant. Okay, he's like, go, go take my staff and go just go lay it on him. He'll come alive. And she said, I'm not leaving unless you come with me. I'm taking the word with me because I'm going to conquer. I'm going to fight death. I'm going to whatever with the word. And so she brought it with him. And the servant went ahead and threw the stick upon or the staff upon the little girl or the little boy, rather. And he comes back and he's like, hey, Elisha, you know, like the staff, it didn't work. I'm just letting you know. I know we're walking here. It didn't work, man. I'm telling you, it didn't work. And so I can just see Elisha going, huh, it always works. Huh. It always works. So he goes into the house and he goes up to the room and sure enough, huh, it's not working. Hmm. It always works. All right. So I'm just going to lay on him. So he laid on him and the body became warm. He says that he got up and he walked around. He's like, that works. It always works. So what did he do? Walked around, closed the door, walked around the house. Okay, make sure I got everything right. This is the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord told me this. This is what he said. You know, we'll go back in there. All right, lays on him, boom, come back to life. Kind of reminded me of this, and this is an analogy that popped into my heart, into my head. You ever try to start a car? The other day, and it doesn't start. The steering wheel's locked up. The key won't, the ignition won't turn over. Well, just the other day, I was taking uh, somebody up to, uh, to a place, and I, I, my, car, my vehicle was gone. My son had my truck, and so I'm taking my middle son's truck. Well, in my house, I got four drivers, one, two, three, five drivers. I don't know, a lot of drivers, okay? And so there's keys, five drivers, yeah, five drivers. So there's keys all over, and Caleb thinks he can drive too. So six keys, and those are side-by-side keys. So there's keys everywhere. I don't know whose keys are what, but I ran 
to take this, uh, to take, actually it was Jack Montgomery, he was uh, taking, I was going to take him up to, uh, to get his vehicle and come back, and so it's hot out, and the truck windows are up, so I'm like, yeah, I'll just take Sam's truck. So I run over there, and I get in, and there's no keys. Oh, shoot. All right, hey, I'll be right back. So I run into the house, Sam, Sam, where's your keys? So they're, uh, they're down there on the coffee bar. Okay. Okay, there's three keys. I think these look like Sam's. Whoop, grab them. I run out to the truck. And I put it in, and I try to start it, and it's like it's not turning over. And he has a Chevy. I have a Chevy. She has a Chevy. Matt has a Chevy. So we got a lot of Chevys. It's a Chevy key. Okay. Uh, it's not starting. It's not starting. Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I'll be right back. <laughs> Sam, are these your keys? Sam, what? What? These right here. I can't see them. What does it have on it? A uh, Nike thing. Black and white. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, those are my keys. Okay. These are the keys. I just didn't know it. I just didn't know it. I had the right key the whole time. I just quit on it. All of a sudden, I just worked it a little longer. When you get a word of the Lord, it's the right key. When we're praying and we receive a word of the Lord, I got what I need. I got what I need. God gave it to me. I'm walking with the Lord. I'm walking with Him. That's what we're doing tonight. It's when we come in and we pray. When we, when we have the times of prayer, when you go at home, when you're laying in bed, maybe you're married and you're laying in bed and you're facing a financial challenge or you're raising a teenager or, or whatever it could be that seems difficult. You know, you can grab hands. You can just agree. What a, and, and you can say, or you can even just talk and say, what did the Lord say to us? Honey, what did the Lord say to us? I, I, I don't know. Well, let's get quiet tonight before we go to bed. And let's just listen. Because so many times praying requires these or this and as I require of him he fills my heart he reminds me the Holy Spirit comes and he says I told you if you would stop talking about what you're seeing and declare what I said about him it would change. Yeah, but I tried that. We t- we've been trying that. I got the right key. We need to be confident in this. Getting a word from the Lord. Remembering that He loves us. And our prayers, your prayers, they'll be far more effective than they've ever been. Prayer is not some kind of Hail Mary, wishful thinking thing. This is, this is our requiring of the Lord. It is our, give me that word again. It was so good. Reliance. Reliance. Lord, we rely on you tonight. Father, we just lift our, we close our eyes. We lift our hearts before you. We lift our, our hands. It just, we just surrender who we are to you. Lord, if it wasn't for you, where would we be? If it wasn't for your love for us, that you send in your son Jesus to wash us and to cleanse us, to forgive us where we fell short. Lord, thank you. Thank you tonight. We just say thank you for paying the ultimate price for us. For washing us, for forgiving us of our sins. Before we ever came to you, you thought of us, you loved us. In that same way, before anyone ever comes, we purpose in our hearts tonight with the words of our mouths, directing our steps to forgive as you forgave. To not count suffered wrongs. 
to believe the best, to be able to call out things, oh, that we couldn't see with our eyes. But, but love could see. Thank you for loving us, for washing us, cleansing us. You said that, that, that people would know you by our love for one another. So we just thank you for your love in our hearts. We thank you for your love in our hearts. It's been shed abroad. It's completely fills and overwhelms and overruns our hearts. We just say thank you and we remember tonight. Remind us, Lord, how you found us. Remind us how you found us. How you took us out of a pit. How you picked us up. How you washed us off. How you cleansed us from a past. Made us white as snow. Remind us of your price. Remind us of the cross. Not an easy thing. But you counted the cost. And you said we were worth it. At any cost. At any cost. Lord, at any cost. Let that love be in us. At any cost. At any cost toward one another, toward, toward our children, toward our fathers, toward friends, towards enemies, toward like at any cost, Lord, any cost, Lord, at any cost. Your love. Your love. Father, in our hearts, but in this house, in our homes, wherever we go, carriers of the light and love that you showed us. Oh, there would be goodness. Oh, there would be strength to persevere, to carry on, self-control, just goodness, just goodness, that goodness would go with us, that the goodness would go before us, that the goodness that we carry as we go, it would lead men to you. You said it is your goodness. Lord, it's a virtue. It's a, it's a tangible thing that we're to carry. Let your goodness just rest upon us as we remember the price that you paid for us. Thank you, Lord, that we'd be willing to pay that price just the price ha, the same way that you did Lord any place that we um, haven't valued your word maybe because we didn't know maybe because uh, we've heard so many and so much you've been so kind to come again and again and again Lord the word that, that you've spoken the word that you've said the word that hasn't ha didn't have a season but it's incorruptible and you watch over it to perform it. We're just asking for that word again. Refresh that word. Thank you for the word in season and out of season. Thank you that as a people we carry your word in season. We're ready in season and out of season ready to bring your word. Oh, thank you, Lord. Your word. 
your word. Ha. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word, your promise. Everything that we need for here on this earth to experience and to taste what you have in store or what's in your heart for those that love him. Thank you, Lord. And they're called according to his purpose. Thank you for those that you're calling. Thank you for laborers tonight. Lord, we're laborers. You said, lift up your eyes for the harvest is ripe. Pray the Lord to send forth laborers. Lord, show us and send us to harvest that field, to harvest the field that we're in, to harvest the field where to go. Lord, show us where to harvest. Show us how to harvest. Thank you for laborers to go, laborers to put down uh, what we're doing, to, to pick up and to be about what you're doing. Thank you for laborers. Lord, we're asking for laborers. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Here we are, Lord. We'll go. Who will go? Who will go? Who will come at the invitation? Father, we we honor your word tonight. And Lord, where we've not, um, where we've made prayer some um, religious ritual, we just make a move. We make an adjustment in our hearts to simply know it's simply our reliance on you. Where we cry for help, where we look to you for direction and strength, where we look to you at every turn. Lord, we thank you that this house, where you've led us to come and gather to worship you together, that this house will be a house of prayer, that this house will be a house of reliance on you, where your word and, and, and you flow freely, where people come and they meet with you, they hear from you, they're changed, they're, they're brought in, but they're sent out with purpose, equipped, commissioned for such a time as this. This people, this house, walking with you. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen. Well, praise the Lord. We are done. And um, we got uh, one last thing. Okay, so we have our foam party. Um, so if you have a K through fifth grader, um, they've already been enjoying outside. They already are in the foam, um, and they've already had.